Hi everyone, my name is Doreen Zabasi and I work at Red Hat. I work on enabling the audio stack and also the Red Hat uh, GPU in automotive. And with me here is Matthias. Hello everyone, I'm Matthias and with Doreen I also work in the automotive team and the virtualization team building virtual devices. And uh, in this time, we're going to talk about the virtual sound device. It's a device that we just developed last year, and it is in continuous development too. Okay, so in this presentation, we'll be talking about building the retail sound device. We'll go through the retail sound uh, device implementation under the Rust VMM project, and. Uh, we'll just go through a brief outline. We'll talk about the automotive use case, the protocol overview. We'll discuss the device and the driver, and also the implementation and the architecture. <coughs> so just a brief update since the last talk we had at FOSDEM. Uh, we now have the vehicle's device sound published as a crate on the crates.io, and we also have the vehicle's device sound available as a package in Fedora. So it's available in Federal 39 or uh, 40, and it can be tested with Quemu version 9.0. And some other interesting updates we have on the device is uh, some work on the improvements of how the descriptors are being distributed over a request. And for the driver side, uh, some engineers at Open Synergy, they worked on the designs for the virtual audio control systems, and it's based on the outside audio controls so now it allows like the driver to perform read and write operations and also like writing audio control values. So uh, what and why this retail sound device? So just to explain the why the, uh, we're building the retail sound device, our main use case is the automotive industry. And in automotive, Android guests are currently being used for deploying infotainment systems. So in order to uh, support Android running as a guest, the virtual machine monitor, as in our case, we're using Quemu, it requires a set of virtual hardwares. So it requires like Retail Net or Retail GPU or Retail Sound. And having this Retail Sound device emulation would allow for Android to be deployed in different VMMs that support the uh, Retail device. Now, examples of these VMMs could be Quemur or uh, CrossVM, and uh, if there are any other existing VMs. And the uh, Android reference platform here, which I linked in the slide, it defines like a set of virtual interfaces that are required from any virtual machine monitor that runs Android. And based on our expectation for Quemur KVM, which is like a hyper, um, which is a hardware agnostic based hypervisor, we decided to close the gap and that was enabling the Vertile Sound device. So now with this Vertile Sound device, which is running in the host user space, any other uh, application in the guest can interact with the device on the host user space. And even other devices that implement the host user protocol can interact with it. So some users of the vhost device sound we have uh, the Rust VMM community where the device is actually being hosted and Quemu users as well and developers where the PCI device is residing. And we also have the virtual open system uh, developers that tested the Vihos device sound on an EGL reference platform board. And this board is based on the, I think, Renesas Arca SOC. It's running automotive grid Linux. So uh, we also had some interested parties like the Qualcomm developers who showed interest in using it for their yeah, emulation purposes. I think we met them at KVM Forum last year. And we, the Red Hatters as well, using the device. <laughs> so before showing you how we build this device, let's tell you what the device is. Okay. So the Vettel sound device is a paravirtualized sound device and is based off on the Vettel specification standard. It's consisting of the Vettel sound driver, the PCI bus transport, and the uh, vhost device sound, uh, like the device itself. And this is an architectural view of what the sound stack looks like. 
and how the different vertical components come together, which I'll be explaining. So the first part of the stack is the user application that's in the guest. It's interacting with the vertical sound driver. So let's take, for example, an ALSA application or uh, like, let's say, uh, in the case of Android, it would be using a tiny ALSA library. And it's communicating with the vertical sound driver using a set of syscalls and uh, common user space libraries, such as uh, the ALSA library. And uh, just to be sure that we have the vertical sound uh, driver enabled in the guest, you can use the uh, LS mode to check if the driver is not there. And if it's not there, you can like, get the driver in your guest. And next, we have the vertical uh, sound driver itself that takes that information that it has received from the guest user space and it shares it over a transport method. So in our case, it's the PCI bus. And this PCI bus is a way to expose the sound device to the Vettel sound driver that's in the guest. Next, we have the Vettel sound device, which is just like any other user space application. So it was responsible for accepting the message request from the driver. And it executes uh, this message operations that it receives from the driver by sending those audio streams to the host sound drivers through, let's say, the corresponding libraries and like daemons that are in the uh, that are in the host kernel space. And it could do that like using any of the audio backends. So it could use the like Pipewire backend or the Alsa or Null backend. <laughs> uh, so for the vehicle user protocol, which I already mentioned. It's a set of messages that's designed to offload the uh, Vettel data path processing from Quemu to a user space process that's running in the host. And this user space process application is what's responsible for configuring the uh, Vettel data rings and also doing the uh, actual processing. So an interesting thing about this protocol is that it uses the, uh, the Unix domain socket for communication. And it defines two sites for communication. So we have the front end and the back end, where the front end is sending the message request, and the back end is sending like the message replies. So uh, another interesting thing is that the protocol implements the control planes that's needed for establishing the red queues. So um, in order to share red queue, we like need the control planes, which this protocol implements between the guest and the user space process. And it utilizes the vhost user library. So this is an example of what the vhost user protocol message looks like, where we have the front end that's sending the VetQ memory layout and configuration to the back end. And the message output here is in hex. You can see in the command line, which I attached there. An example of one of these messages is the vhost get feature message. It's expecting an acknowledgment reply. And sometimes, not all like messages expect a reply from the back end. So this subdump tool here, which I linked in the slide, like how to use the tool, it's a tracing tool that helps you while debugging. So it will dump like the socket traffic of messages between with the front end and the back end, and it like captures all the traffic that's specified by the uh, socket path. You could also generate the output in pickup format if you wanted. So. Uh, about the Vettel memory region. Uh, this region is initially being allocated by the guest, and in Kremu, it's done using the memprealloc option configuration. So uh, the Vettel memory region that was being allocated by the guest is being mapped by both the uh, front end and the back end using the mmap syscalls and the uh, file descriptors. So it would access the like, guest memory through mmap and the file descriptors. During the feature bit negotiation, this happened at the device initialization stage. And this is where we have the device and the driver like having features that need to be negotiated. So at this point here, the driver would read the feature bits that the Vettel sound device is offering to the driver. And it will tell the device the um, subset of features that it can accept. So if it can't accept some features, it like, tells the driver it can't. Or, and for example, let's say the Vettel ring uh, F event IDX feature, when that feature has been negotiated, it allows the device to uh, control how the notification from the driver should be handled. And 
there are other features that are specified in the uh, Vertio device specification. And the, dri the driver itself, that's the Vertio sound driver, it doesn't have any feature bit specific, like currently defined, but it uses the Vertio device uh, features. And there are also a couple of driver requirements for those feature bit negotiation. You can also find it in the Vertio specification. Next. So, in a nutshell, a vet queue is like a queue of guest allocated buffers, and the Vettel sound driver is consisting of four vet queues, where we have like the control queue, the event queue, the CX, and the RX queue. And each of these uh, vet queues uh, consists of like three parts. So the first part is the descriptor table, which is occupying like the descriptor area, and then we have the available ring that's occupying the driver area, and we have like the used ring occupying the device area. To further explain how these red queues are being mapped in the driver and the device side, let's use an, a typical example like the user space application that's running in the guest. Let's say it notifies the driver of the audio streams that needs to be processed. Now, what would happen in the driver side is that when it wants to send buffer to the device, it would fill a slot in the descriptor table with the mmap buffers, and it would also write that descriptor index to the available ring. And then it will notify the device that, okay, here are available buffers that needs to be processed. Now, depending on the buffer size, it could create like a descriptor chain. Then on the device side, uh, when it has finished consuming these buffers, it would write those descriptor index into the used ring and send like a used buffer notification to the driver. Although in the past, uh, this wasn't how the driver itself used to work because it was unable to determine when a uh, um, buffer has been updated in the driver side. And some of our upstream contributions was to ensure that this acknowledgement callback was being used to notify the updated buffers. So it helps to like, prevent the reading of stale buffers. Uh, thanks to Matthias for those contributions. And now let's see how the device uh, like how the requests are being processed in the device. So for each of the red queues, which is the first one, the control queue is being used for sending control messages from the driver to the device. And these control red queues are being translated into the vehicle user request and it's forwarded to the back end, which is the device for processing. Uh, we have the event queue, although we didn't use it in our implementation because it wasn't necessary, uh, like, just the event queue. And for the TX queue, we use it for sending the PCM frames for the output streams. And this uh, TX queue carries the PCM frames that have been initiated by the driver, and it replies to like the previously received frames. So this TX queue is used during the playback. And the RX queue, which is like the opposite of what the TX queue does, it's used to receive the PCM frames for the input streams, and these RX red queues would carry the PCM frames that are initiated by the device, and it would reply to the previously transmitted frames, and it's used during the capture. The device implementation now. So now I'm going to talk um, <clears throat> about the the implementation of the VHOS user sound. Um, the VHOS user sound implementation is split into the front end and the back end. Uh, and the front end and the back end communicate by using the VHOS user protocol, as Dorinda <coughs> explained before. Sorry, I have the voice. I cannot talk super loudly. And uh, so uh, for the front end, we base on the work from Alex Benet from Linario. Uh, that simplified the boilerplate code in Kimu, uh, which is common for all the uh, Behost user devices. So if you want to see the series, I, set, I put the, um, the patch set there. Then for the back end, we decided to implement by relying on the Rust BMM project. Um, and the benefits of doing this is that I, uh, at the following, we have um, already some structure, some crate that we can reuse to implement our device. Uh, also, the device is implemented by using the Rust VMM project. 
and sorry, the Rust, uh, the Rust uh, language, and with all the benefits of using, uh, using that language. <clears throat> also, uh, when implemented in this way, uh, the process is running in a separated process as Kimu. So if the process is compromised, it doesn't mean that compromise Kimu too. And, um, and also we have also measuring that compared with other build, uh, built in devices, in our case, we, we have less context switches. So in the next slide, we're going to, to talk about how the backend is implemented. So the current implementation is made of a, of a device and an audio backend. Uh, the audio backends implement drivers for different uh, libraries like Pipewire or Alsa. And the whole backend is implemented by a single thread. Uh, and we have called the number of the strings to one for input and one for output. So when a new request is received, depending on the queue, we have different handling, handlers and the processing of the request depend on, on the queue. So for example, let's start with the control message that they are going to send into the control queue. Uh, what we do when we get a message in the control queue, the first thing we do is to, rec to parse the request uh, and invoke the corresponding uh, handler, which is the SROs in red. And this is a node blocking API that processes the request immediately. So after processing the request, we immediately notify the guest, and this is the arrows in blue. So for example, if um, we dump the context of the available ring when we get the set param command, um, so the Linux driver is going to use two descriptors to, I mean, to, to map this request. This is made of a one read-only descriptor that contains the first structure, the virtual param structure, and a second descriptor, the number three, that is a write-only descriptor that contains the status. So the device is going to read this structure, uh, process this, and then set up the status and write the status in the, in the descriptor that is for write-only, right? Um, uh, in this case, for example, the, the virtual spec only force the driver to enqueue bright only descriptors just after the real only descriptors. That is the sequence that the driver has to follow. Uh, but for example, the driver may spread the, this structure, the virtual SND PCM set param structure uh, through two descriptors, it's just only one. This is a, a special case, let's say. Um, and in, even if this is distributed in two descriptors, it's still valid based on the spec. Um, but in the first implementation of our device, we have called this. We have called the parsing of the of the descriptor, assuming that the first one is always containing this structure, and this is something that we already fix. Uh, and we're trying to fix that because it could not be hard called with for a uh, one particular driver. Um, instead, it should be independent of how uh, this information is distributed in the in the chain of descriptors. And this is a PR that I said that you can see, I put a link there, it's still in review, but I hope it's going to be merged soon. So now when, when we analyze what happened when we get a request in the transmission uh, queue, um, remember that the transmission queue is when the guests want to play something. So here it's going to send data, it's going to play in the speaker of the host. So this is not, it doesn't contain information about control, but it contains data uh, that is going to be played. So what we do uh, in this case is when we get the request, we just keep a 5 queue, which point to the request, the request that, we, that has just arrived. And at some point, the pipe wire thread is going to pop the request and play it. <clears throat> so the idea is that we cannot play any amount of data, we have to play one period, uh, which is something that the device and the driver configure at the beginning. Otherwise, we, we don't use the buffer correctly. So just give you some information how data is, is, how data is, is, is coded when audio is sent. 
So when we have, when we have two, one channel, the, um, it is assuming that the stride is two byte, for example, and this is going to one speaker. But then when we use two channels and we have the stereo, uh, we have the data distributed uh, like in two slots, um, and the stride is now four bytes, one for each speaker. And this changed also with the number of channels. So in the, just to, um, yeah, what, a different way the control queue will happen in the transmission queue, we notify the guests only after we have consumed uh, the buffer. So it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's not synchronous, it's a synchronous mechanism in this case. Um, for the reception, it's more or less the same that the transmission, we know, pop up uh, a buffer for a variable, variable ring, and then what we do now is pull data in that buffer and we send to the guest because we're getting data from the, from the capture for the microphone, for example. So if you want to try it, this is the command lines. Um, you, you have to first launch the daemon that is going to run in another process, and then you launch chemo with the corresponding set of parameters. Um, well, this is a list of some of the of the recently after contributions. Um, we have to work in the, um, in the virtual sound driver because we find some issues that they're in dimension already. Um, we also have been working on the spec, but sometimes it's not super clear, so we have working on this and submitted some patches. Um, also, we pick up the descriptor util crate from virtual FSS and we put it in virtual queue crate, so now we are going to use that also for, for, to fix the problem of the distribution of the request over descriptors. Um, what else? Yeah, this is the contribution to the Kimu for the boiler per code. And there are other contributions regarding PipeWire that this was mostly done by Dorinda. Um, so this is more or less what we were thinking about the future work. We don't know exactly how much amount of time we're going to spend on this, but more or less that is an idea that someone else maybe could pick up. So for example, um, we were thinking that we, we will, it would be nice to each time that we, I mean, a new release of the kernel is, I mean, it's released, we can try it if the driver works correctly, I mean, the device works correctly. We were planning, we were thinking also when we maybe write a bit of some future to, to be able to find bugs in the device implementation. And uh, we have been discussing that maybe the current mechanism that we use to communicate between the guests and the host should use virtual shared memory rations, which is another feature of the spec, but not, not the driver or the device are implementing this. Um, also recently have been submitted uh, some, um, some new features in the driver regarding the audio control that maybe we have had support to that uh, in the device. And we were planning also maybe at some point to add a new audio backend for, for GS Streamer. And yeah, so now it's a time of demo. I don't have, we, have, we have time still, right? Okay. Right, okay. Let's see if this let's see if this works. I think it's also set you know, for the HDMI sound mm. solution that's <laughs> Right, 
So yeah, well, what the first thing I'm going to do is launch the demo. So, um, yeah, sorry. Well, the first thing I'm going to launch is the is the demo, demon, which is going to implement the device. Yeah, I can. I can. Sorry, what? Well, if I do that run again, this is the command line. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So now we're going to do is just to launch Linux. And I think I have something here. Yeah. Well, this is playing something. And then <sighs> you can, for example, try also the capturing. Um, I don't remember the array core is right there. Array core. Um, hello, hello. Well, I'm not going to work with this, but. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Just. Okay. Well, we're not showing the traces, so I have to believe me that this is it is the device user sound that is playing. But uh, yeah, I don't know if you have any question. No, I think you have, uh, I'm, yeah. Ah, yeah. Um, you will say, the question was if I can connect one instance of the demo uh, with several chemo virtual machines, right? I think, I'm not exactly sure, but I think when you require one instance of the demo per virtual machine, which is going to use one socket per VM. And so yeah. Uh, just to add, I'm thinking maybe we could also like set up two devices with two different socket paths and connect to two separate uh, Quemo VMs. Sorry, repeat the question. Okay, he's asking about if we can make comments on the matrix for latency or overhead in comparison with other devices. So actually, 
uh, we did some measurements for latency and also for CPU context switches. So we measured it against the inbuilt Vertio sound device, and we also measured it against the Intel HDA device that's available in Quemo. And we noticed like a huge uh, reduced context switches, which kind of improves the CPU performance you see. And for the latency, uh, in comparison to the other devices that are inbuilt in Cremo, there was not so much uh, difference per se for the latency because even inside of Cremo, uh, the pipewire backend and in comparison to other backends is quite, uh, it's really good um, in terms of reduced latency. So I would say in comparison with the device, it's, it's I, I would say competing on like a, a competing level for latency. But for the other things, such as overhead, I would say that uh, running this device as an external application helps to uh, reduce the uh, workload on Quemu because you're not like running this Vertel sound device inside of Quemu. Thank you.